I'm Diane Sabato. I'm a full-time faculty person in the business department at STCC. And it's my pleasure to welcome you and thank you for being here today for the first in a series that we're gonna be offering through the business department on webinars that can assist you as you're starting and or running or progressing in your business careers. Today's session is the top three things I learned about starting a business. And we're gonna be featuring three local successful entrepreneurs sharing their stories. And what I really like is that each of them is also a graduate of one of the local colleges, including STCC. So um, we're gonna take up with Anthony Rondinelli, who is one of my colleagues at STCC in the business department. And he will be reviewing today's agenda and then we will go from there. So thank you again for being here. And next slide, please. Well, thank you, Diane. And I wanna take a moment just to welcome everyone to today's uh, webinar. And as Diane had said, uh, my name is Anthony Rondinelli. I'm also a professor in the business department here at SDCC, as well as a proud SDCC alum. <laughs> it's our pleasure to, to um, have everyone joining us today. Um, and you know, this is being recorded, so hopefully, even more people will get to, to benefit from seeing these wonderful entrepreneurs. So we have, uh, we're gonna go through some introductions of each of the panelists, and then the panel, panelists will uh, do a brief presentation for everyone. And then we have Len Gendron as well from SCORE, and he will be talking a little bit about what SCORE can offer to uh, new businesses and existing businesses. And then we'll be talking a little bit about what STCC can offer in terms of business programs and education. And finally, we'll save some time at the end of the webinar for some Q&A. So without further ado, we'll keep rolling. Thank you. Next slide, please. So this is the uh, setup for today. And here are the people that are participating. Myself and Professor Rondinelli will be facilitating. Len Gendron will be presenting about SCORE. And our panelists are Mark Chamberlain, who is an STCC graduate. He also graduated from UMass University Without Walls. And he is the president and owner of Wind Supply in Manchester. Shayla Kuhn, who is an Elms College graduate. She's the founder and chief cookie baker of Hot Oven Cookies. And Lenny Underwood, who is an AIC graduate who is the owner and founder of two businesses, Underwood Photography and Upscale Sucks. And we'll give you some more detailed bios as we move along. Next slide, please. So the first person that's gonna to speak today and share a little bit about his business startup story, the journey that he's taken and his top three tips is Mark Chamberlain. And Mark was born and raised in Springfield, Mass. He graduated from STCC in about 2016, we think. Uh, followed by completing his undergraduate degree through UMass University Without Walls, which is a non-traditional program. During his time at STCC, Mark founded and ran a successful mobile car detailing business, servicing a number of corporate accounts, which I guess I can probably say included Mass Mutual. And I remember when Mark landed the account and kept growing it and growing it and then started cleaning their chopper which I thought was amazing. Like when you start a car deal, detailing business, I'm not sure that you think you're gonna be washing helicopters, but that was the case. Um, he made the transition into supply chain management when an entrepreneurial opportunity was presented to him through his connections at Springfield Technical Community College. Mark continued in the industry and is now the president and owner of his own local supply company with 15 employees and over $14 million in sales. So I'm happy to present Mark Chamberlain. Thank you, Professor Sabato. Um, yeah, so like Professor said, uh, I was born and raised in Springfield, um, graduate of STIC. Uh, last year I was promoted to company president um, and bought ownership into Wind Supply Manchester, uh, which is a fairly large plumbing supply company uh, based in the Hartford, around Hartford area of Connecticut. Uh, so I really started my entrepreneurial experience um, when I was about 22, 23 years old. I 
made my first attempt at starting a online uh, universal gym membership called Gym Ponds. Uh, the plan was to set up a network of gyms across the country um, and allow members from other gyms to have access to any gym across the country. Uh, I kind of came across this idea on my own when I was uh, out on vacation and going to gyms and kept, you know, spending money on day passes. And I thought it'd be a great idea to have a, uh, a one pass fits all kind of, kind of set up. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing. I kind of just was flying by the seat of my pants and, um, you know, put a website together, got a logo, started a Twitter account. I thought if I had a Twitter account, success would just kind of come my way. Um, you know, I sort of lost energy and steam on it. Uh, at the end, I found I was able to get some interest. I had about 100 gyms signed up, you know, waiting to uh, take advantage of gym ponds. Um, but again, I, I didn't really know what I was doing and uh, kind of lost steam on that. But I had a, uh, from that experience, I got the itch that I knew this was a direction I wanted to eventually or continue to pursue was having my own local company or own business. Um, so I enrolled in, at the Stick uh, Business School on uh, some of the entrepreneurship classes with Sabato, Professor Sabato, um, marketing business courses. I was, my thought was that I could better equip myself to use for my next business venture if I um, went to school and tried. And I was very fortunate because I was able to take the lessons that I was learning in class and go home and work on a uh, new business idea, which was eventually MJ's mobile detailing service. Uh, a high school friend of mine and I were putting this together. My original plan was to provide car detailing services to golf courses on weekends while people are out golf and we thought it'd be a good idea if they could play around and come back to a, a nice clean car. Um, it eventually transitioned uh, through golf courses into corporate accounts. Um, we went from doing just cars to helicopters, to boats, um, to buses. We had an account with Peter Brand bus line. We, we uh, detailed some of their vehicles. Um, but over time, my, and we went from, uh, it used to be just myself and my business partner. And then we ended up getting four full-time employees. I uh, had two crews running at once. Um, didn't make a ton of money, but it supported a lit my living for, um, about five years. And I was able to keep a few people employed. Um, but my business partner and I eventually, uh, were deciding we were kind of heading in different directions. On um, after about six years, we dissolved the business. It was kind of a bittersweet end, but um, you know, I through uh, my next approach to uh, entrepreneurship was when uh, through Stick and Professor Sabato was to sit in on a opportunity where a local company was selling their manufacturing rep business, uh, which is in the plumbing and heating industry. Uh, so I sat in on that and after a couple of interview processes was uh, elected as the person that was going to succeed the business owner. But I learned a lot in that time frame. It was about, uh, about a year that I was working um, and trying to buy into this business. I uh, learned a lot about the industry, but it didn't pan out. So I eventually um, moved on and took a, uh, that experience and found myself, you know, kind of working in sales in the plumbing supply industry, uh, working for sales reps. Um, then finally came across wind supply back in 2017. And what caught my attention with wind supply was that they really focus on what they call the spirit of opportunity. They like to seek and find uh, people with entrepreneurial uh, spirits to get them to buy in and become local company presidents. Um, Wind Supply itself is a, a national company. We have, there's over 600 stores that service trade industries from electricians to plumbers, HVAC technicians, uh, well pumps, 
and and such and such. Um, so that is what really got me into Winter Supply was that opportunity to become um, a company president. It wasn't where I thought I'd be when I was back at MJ's, but uh, I think my entrepreneurial spirit is what got me to the position I am today. Um, you know, the path to becoming a local company president here was, um, you know, one setting goals and communicating those goals with your leaders and uh, the company president at the time so they can help get you on the track and help you network and meet the right people and get the right training. Um, you know, I started in 2017 processing, just processing warranties, then got promoted to warehouse manager and promoted to operations manager. And part of it being at the right place at the right time, the previous company president moved on to a, uh, another local company and the opportunity was presented to me. Um, it was probably about five years prior or before I actually thought I was going to be uh, company president. I thought maybe by 2025, I'd actually get an opportunity, but uh, I didn't feel ready for it uh, last year when they offered me the job, but I knew that, you know, sometimes these positions you're never quite ready for, but you have to just take a chance and um, take the opportunity when it's available. You don't know when it's going to come by again. Um, you know, and now there is some opportunity for me in the future with this company to uh, spin off another local company. They call them a hub and spoke. So we brought in um, Well Pumps as an additional line this year. And my goal is by 2025 to uh, spin off another local company, which I will be able to have some ownership in as well. And also give another individual an opportunity to become a local company president of, of their own. Um, so going into the three things that I've learned about starting a business, the first one, success is proportional to the amount of work you put in. Um, I've found over my experience, uh, kind of ties in with MJ's and with wind supply here, is that, you know, if you're out there and you focus your energy on improving yourself, improving your business, helping others improve, that, you know, success will come your way. It may not come through the point of where all your focus is at the time, you know, it may come from another direction, but if you're not putting yourself out there, then that opportunity, those opportunities um, may never come to you. The second thing was um, planning is important, but don't let analysis paralysis take a hold of you. Um, I think with Jim Ponds, my first attempt at running a business was clear to see, and I learned that not having a plan is not really that beneficial or doesn't really help you out that much when you're trying to start a business, um, especially trying when you have decisions to make or people are asking you questions and um, not having a plan doesn't, doesn't really help you out. But then when we got into doing MJ's, my business partner and I, we spent so much time planning after, after work and on the weekends, um, it eventually started to feel like we were just going in circles, trying to iron out all the fine details and make a perfect business plan that it seemed like we were eventually, we were just procrastinating on taking that actual first step out into the world of selling our business and getting to clean cars. And um, so we set a hard date and, you know, said this is at this date, we're actually going to, we're going to go out and we're going to find some cars, whether it's friends, family members, uh, relatives. Um, you know, we went to local, about, I don't know how many golf courses in Western Mass, um, just cold calling on them. And eventually, you know, we did land one account, which that one account is what got us into Mass Mutual. Um, it's what got us into Lego and Blastus and um, all these other opportunities that came our way. And that kind of goes back to success is proportional to the work you put in. Um, you know, we worked really hard going to other places, but the opportunities came from different directions. Um, and the third thing was uh, show up to the party. And that's to take advantage of opportunities to network and be people. And I found this one, um, I was at a mass challenge, which was a uh, competition for startup companies in Massachusetts. Uh, I entered Jim Ponds into it at the time. And I went to a event where they had the founder of monster.com, Jeff Taylor there as a uh, guest speaker. And he, this was his advice was to show up to the party. And basically 
what he's trying to say is, you know, if you have an opportunity to go out and meet people, to network, to take uh, participate in entrepreneurship conferences or work events, or even just a night out with some friends, you never know who you might bump into. And through those networking events and through those opportunities to, to meet people, um, you know, it really opens up a lot of doors. And that's kind of where I'm at today. So I, you know, I want, just wanted to say thank you to Professor Sabato and Stick and Score for giving me the opportunity to uh, participate in this today. Thank, thank you, Mark. You. Those are fantastic things to remember as you start your business. And people are gonna find that each of our panelists has their own set of gems and pearls of wisdom that they're gonna be sharing after a lot of hard work and experience in the field. So thank you. Next slide, please. Our next speaker is Shayla Kuhn, and she is the owner, founder, and chief cookie baker of Hot Oven Cookies, which is a fast, casual, retro, modern cookie company specializing in artisanal gourmet cookies in whimsical and innovative flavors. And being a customer, I can attest to the many choices that you have when you go there. In 2016, she found herself an overworked single mom seeking employment that offered flexibility and sustainability beyond 16 hour shifts and earning minimum wage. She couldn't find it, so she used her 20 years as a pastry chef and 27 years as a mom to seven cookie monsters to launch Hot Oven Cookies. Her mission is to be an expeditive style bakery with a rotating menu of over 500 original cookie flavors with friendly, good, old fashioned customer service, satisfying time starved, nostalgia seeking cookie cravers need for comfort, convenience and variety. And again, Speaking as a customer, she has exceeded her mission. And just in case you missed it, uh, Hot Oven Cookies and Shayla were featured in the February 2022 edition of Outlook put mm -hmm. out by the Republican. And there's a really comprehensive, in-depth, amazing article on the business, which you know I'm sure we can share some links to when we send out the presentation. So it is my pleasure to welcome Shayla. Take it away. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, cookies are a very integral part of my life. It, they've been for a long time. Um, when my mom uh, divorced my dad, she actually uh, had three little kids to raise. She had just moved here from Puerto Rico. But what she had was her skills at baking. So she started a small cookie company and she only sold chocolate chip cookies and peanut butter cookies. And uh, I had you know, front row seats to what she was doing. And there was two things that really fascinated me. And I didn't know which one fascinated me the most. The joy that my mom got from creating um, the cookies for the customers or the, the, the joy that the customers had when they received it from her knowing that it was something done with authenticity and actually genuine love. And the third actually that I forgot to mention was that empowerment. She empowered herself through a situation that could have been otherwise. And she set a really good example for, for me and for my siblings. Um, like I said, I, I, I had seven kids. I was actually a teen mom and stick plays a part for me in this because uh, I actually had my first son when I was uh, 16 and I was enrolled in stick really much like a couple months later. And I used to take my son, I lived in Northampton and I took the bus. And I had my backpack, his baby bag in a stroller, and I rode him right in with me to class. And I will never forget the math teacher that I had who would you know, come over um, and entertain him while I had tests to take and um, really encouraged me to do whatever it is I wanted to do, uh, which at that time was to become a lawyer. And so uh, the staff at, at STIC and what they presented just offered a foundation for me for whatever direction I was going to take. And um, that actually took me to Elms. I got my bachelor's degree in paralegal studies, uh, five kids later. <laughs> and then uh, I sat for my LSATs. And as I sat there for my LSATs, I started to think about the things that would make me happy and how much I could actually and genuinely give to the people that were gonna receive services from me. And I realized that the season had come that I needed to start taking care of myself. 
so I went to culinary school and um, I worked as um, as a paralegal. I worked as a social service worker and I kept baking. Um, when I was in pastry school, I would bake my kids all these fancy desserts and they hated them. <laughs> and so I said, you know, I'm going to expand what my mom did and I'm going to create a wide variety of cookies for them, albeit plain. And I know they're going to be happy. And they hated them. <laughs> so I was like, I sat them down like at a boardroom meeting and I said, we're going to talk about this. And you're going to tell me what it's going to take for you guys to like these cookies. You know, and they said mac and cheese. <laughs> I said, nope. They said rice and beans because we're from Puerto Rico. I said, nope. And so we continued this. Trust me, it was a process. But then they came up with some good ideas. And so I started a notebook. And I started this notebook. Um, and it required diligence and focus. And over the years, we came up with a thousand flavors. Um, so I had that notebook and I, I baked cookies for my kids. Um, I was in a, a marriage that was very violent. And eventually I got out. Uh, and then when I did get out, <laughs> 21 years later, I lost everything and ended up in a homeless shelter, um, which was very scary for me. I had three of my daughters with me of the seven kids and it was very debilitating because it was so horrifying. I never expected to find myself there. I was educated, I knew better, but there I was. So I started, you know, I kept working and doing what I had to do. But I realized that this was a season to kind of regroup and figure out what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I was tired of working 18 hour days. So with my grandfather's help, I approached a franchise and, and, and asked them um, if they would work with us. We had the $350,000 thanks to my grandfather for a deposit. And they told me I was too average. And they didn't mean it in a bad way. They just said, I didn't have the assets. I may have had the gumption and the tenacity and, and proven it with all sorts of life experiences, but that wasn't going to get me the franchise. So I sat down with all seven of my kids and I said, this time we're going to create a company and what are we going to do? And we came up with cookies. So we sat down, we, um, we came up with the name, we started hand drawing logos. And in, 20, um, in 2015, uh, Hot Oven Cookies was born. Um, with a very organic growth plan, which was like what I call my broke plan because I didn't have any money. <laughs> so I had to figure out how I was gonna jump from cookie delivery to cookie truck, to cookie store, to franchise, which is the most important mission that this company has. And with the help of, again, SCCC, SCORE, uh, Spark e for All, and VVM, we soaked up every possible accelerator, workshop, seminar, it didn't matter what it was, we were there. And um, to be honest with you, a lot of the times I was pitching by the seat of my pants because I'm not a business person per se, back then I wasn't. I was pitching from passion um, and I was pitching in faith that I was gonna be able to see myself through to the ne next growth season. And we've done it. We started out with one cookie truck and then we opened up our first storefront and we kind of, we've transitioned three locations, but we're at our, our, um, our hub store in Springfield. We're about to open up another store. We can't say where yet, but we're opening up another location in October. And we're working with, um, now we have partners and we have two investors that we're vetting um, with a plan right now. We're doing a feasibility study out in Boston um, to open up our first Boston store next year. Um, and we've, we've been starting our travel. We went to California to, sec, to check out a location there that somebody wants to open. We're on to Miami and it's pretty sweet. I mean, that, that's really all in a nutshell um, is where I'm at. And I know I talk very fast, but I'm, you know, mom of seven, I'm very like corporal-ish. <laughs> so I try to like put it all in one space, but it leads me to the three things that I've learned. And one is that you have to maintain a focus on the passion that fuel the creation and the movement of your brand, right? So from a couch in a homeless shelter um, to, to, to my office where I'm sitting and I'm continuously meeting with all these people that all of a sudden have this phenomenal interest in who we are, every day that I get up, 
I have to maintain that focus and that passion because that's what people are going to see of me and through me, through our products and through our customer service. So that's really, really important to maintain that fire at all times. The second and really important one is embracing and celebrating the community because that is key to any sweet victory you have and to your, your growth. Um, during COVID, let's just say we've gone through some serious impediments when it comes to our physical locations. Um, there's times when I just wanted to give up. I just wanted to give up. And then COVID hit. And oh my gosh, we were about ready to take that, that unemployment. And then our customers started coming in and saying, please don't close. Please, please, please don't close. And although we didn't really see ourselves as that much of a beacon, because we're just cookies, we decided that if our mission is cookies and community, we're going to shift it. We're going to be about community and we're going to lead with the cookies. And we stayed open. And to be honest with you, the first couple of months, all we were doing was giving away cookies. We were giving away cookies and giving away conversation, which you always do get for free with us. <laughs> OK, um, but then we, you know, our customers started to come in and felt safe. And so we were able to scale and to pivot. And the last one, and this is one is very near to my heart, and it's something that I teach my children all the time, is that there's a song that I, I've always heard at church, and it says, we fall down, but we get up. And the bottom line is, you have to learn to chart your road to success with the lessons that you've learned. You have to draw on it. You have to take the meat and spit out the bones and find a way to get yourself that energy that you need to just move on. because. Through that clearing is the sunshine and you're going to get there. And you also have to remember that someone is watching you for inspiration. For me, it was my kids. You cannot know how horrible, even to today, the thought and the humiliation of sitting in a homeless shelter was for me. But my kids were watching. And I promised my kids, I said, you know what? I'm going to make it through. I'm going to make it through and we're going to make it through and it's all going to be okay. And now my daughters work for me. Um, one of my daughters is set on, she's about to be, uh, she's studying, she's buying two, she's opening two hot oven cookie shops. Um, she's opening one up. She's looking in New York and she's looking at one in Connecticut. So we've come a long way from the shelter and it's really important to always remember when we're looking about the money and the dollars and the spreadsheets, our humanity, our humanity and who we are and the wholeness of who we are, it matters to us and it matters to the community that's watching us. And that's it. I'm hot oven cookies and I thank you for your time. Wow. Thank you, Sheila. Amazing story. And as soon as you can, go get some cookies. I just have to recommend. <laughs> It's a great story and delicious cookies everywhere you go. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. Our next speaker is Lenny Underwood. Uh, he is the owner and founder of Underwood Photography, which he founded in 2004, which provides an array of photo related services ranging from headshots, parties and weddings to photo shoots, slideshows and photo booth rental. He is actually also a certified personal fitness trainer since 2009. He founded Upscale Socks in 2016. Um, after he had a dream one night in 2014, he dreamed that he owned a sock line business. It was a vivid and specific dream and he hardly ever remembers them, but this one was so vivid he remembered it. He toiled with the idea of launching a new business for about a year until he finally took the leap of faith and began to do some research. After, after several attempts to learn from local small businesses and pursuing a seven week startup business program through Spark Holyoke, which is now e for all that was the key to the development of Upscale Socks. The entire collection of styles has grown to be colorful, vibrant, fun, and meaningful socks for the entire family. Since the inception, they've partnered, participated in several pop-up shops, speaking engagements, they've judged competitions, mentored startup businesses, as well as receiving numerous awards. They've been blessed to be a local non, to be a blessing to local nonprofit organizations and schools with their Suit Your Souls campaign, 
where they match sock donations for every purchase. In addition to the sock donations, they've given away a college scholarship to a deserving college bound scholar. Upscale Socks is optimistic about what the future will bring as they continue to grow the brand. Lenny holds a bachelor and master's degree in public administration with a minor in business. He's a self-proclaimed serial entrepreneur. He in fact is a serial entrepreneur, a member of St. John's Congregational Church, the Brianna Fund for Children with Physical Disabilities, Gospel Concert Planning Committee, and a board member for Wayfinders. He's received numerous awards, which include the MLK Family Service, Services Social Justice Award, the 100 Men of Color, Business West 40 Under 40, which was relatively recently, the Thunderbirds Community Spotlight Award, and the Champion of Character Award, as well as a winner on the hit TV show, Wheel of Fortune. Faith, family, fashion, fitness, friends, and food and photography are some of the things that mean the most to Lenny. So without further ado, Lenny Underwood. Thank you, Diane. I didn't realize all of that was gonna be read, but I appreciate you sharing it. <laughs> I hope you all have me a great day today and um, thank you for participating in this webinar. I have this glow stick. I can't see myself, but hopefully you can see it okay. Um, I think about some of the words that Shayla and Mark said about going through adverse times and persevering, but at times, you know, we have to go through those moments. We're broken. Um, we may have to snap or, you know, go through times where we don't really see the future, but in order to shine, you have to be broken. So um, just like a little stick, um, you know, we have those moments and we are shining through those those highlights and those moments where we're um, proud of ourselves and those around us are and we're um, certainly glad for that. So once again, um, I'm Lenny Underwood. I'm here to be um, sharing some some of my background in, in business. Um, I initially went to college, as was mentioned, to become well, uh, majoring in public administration with a minor in business. I had an interest in business. Um, I was a photographer in high school and through my college experience on campus, taking photos of events and part of yearbook. But uh, my family kept telling me it was a hobby. It wasn't something to pursue full-time, um, get a real job is what my mom and grandmother would often tell me. And so I had that idea of getting a real job and pursuing that full time as a long term career, you know, um, and then having fun, maybe on the weekends, doing photography or retiring. And that would be my my main source of income. But, you know, I just didn't necessarily see that. And it really wasn't happening for me. Um, doors weren't really opening when it came to opportunities. And oftentimes I was told I was over educated and not really qualified with experience when it came to, you know, working for a nonprofit or opportunities within um, education, but that's what my family told me to do, get a real job. So I kept looking and kept pursuing, um, but still had photography as a hobby. This is back in 2004 um, and 2003. And so my first wedding was November, it was Thanksgiving weekend, 2004. And that was a really interesting time. I would say I was in my last semester of undergrad. Uh, I was actually teaching part-time photography in Holyoke, um, black and white photography, digital photography, and some video. And someone broke into my car and stole my equipment. This is at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, uh, my, my my, all my equipment was taken. And my grandmother passed away that same week. So a lot was happening, but I was really, um, I've always been resilient and able to adapt through trials. Even at that young age, I was 21 at the time, but I just, I went to work. Um, I was able to teach and really go through that situation with the best of my ability. And of course, through prayer and just believing that it's just a trial. I, I got through that. So with the assistance of my mom, uh, we went and bought another camera for the wedding that I was asked to 
photograph that Saturday. This is on Black Friday. And so that is, I would say, the genesis officially of Underwood photography. Um, as I was saying, it was just a hobby before that, but um, that was really the birth of the business. And so from there, it really grew into attending networking events in the community and really um, doing additional marketing of my business and believing that it was possible to garner opportunities with corporate gigs and opportunities within the city and outside the region. And, um, and that really happened from destination weddings to corporate to nonprofits. And it's always been really humbling to be given that, those opportunities, especially not having that background knowledge of um, business and really being self-taught in photography. And so from there, um, I've always been passionate about fitness as well. And oftentimes in the gym, I would be asked questions when it came to fitness. And I told myself, well, I might as well get certified as a personal trainer, um, as an additional source of income. And so I pursued a personal training certificate back in 2009. And so for 13 years, I've been also a um, personal fitness trainer locally. It's not something I focus on much these days due to my other responsibilities in business, but um, something I still enjoy offering consultation for and, and advice at times of need. So I would just say for anyone that's out there that has that, that, that inkling to pursue something never is never the perfect time or the the, the the best time, I would say, because, you know, at, even at that time, I was working full time in youth ministry at my church, and I didn't necessarily have the time on my schedule, but I felt as though it's something I really want to do and to add to my my arsenal of of opportunities for, you know, someone that may be in need. And so, as was mentioned in 2014, I had a dream one night that I owned a sock line. And I've never worked in retail before, never had any experience with any design beyond Photoshop. Um, but that idea really bugged me for many, many months. And I really did nothing with it, but have small conversations with individuals about it. And um, once again, prayed about it and, and shared with those that I thought would be helpful in the industry, but unfortunately it didn't get me anywhere. Um, I really just um, felt like I was hitting a, a brick wall. And, and, and I said, well, if other people are doing things that they're passionate or interested in, just like I've done with my other businesses, then just like, uh, then I can do the same thing with, with the sock idea that was given to me. So uh, from 2014 to 2015, I once again, had conversations. And then along with Shayla, she and I were in the same cohort for Spark Holyoke, now e for all We um, went through the trenches together. We brainstormed, we shared insight and some uh, contacts and some information um, to really um, see that our vision came to fruition. And so even then, I, I didn't officially launch until 2016. So for another year, from designs to figuring out logo and name and tagline and website development, you name it, all of that and more um, was being done behind the scenes for Upscale Socks. So officially December 2016 is when we, we launched. And it's been a great journey and so much support, support from the local community and from throughout the region. Um, and, you know, I feel like I'm just getting started when it comes to upscale socks. It's just um, having a lot of the fun with figuring out what the next steps are and getting a lot of good feedback and, and partnerships with the local nonprofit community as well and those that are also for profits. Um, so that is, I guess, the journey that I've been on over the last almost 18 years of business. And then I would like to share some ideas and some content for 
those that are thinking about starting a business and what I've learned over the years. There's so many, but these are many of the ideas that come to mind. So the first is to be consistent. Um, oftentimes, you know, we start something and we stop and we pick it back up after a few months or weeks. So my advice is to always, what, no matter what you're doing, if it's photography, if it's socks, if it's fitness, whatever it is, just be consistent with posting on social media, with communicating with your clients. Um, it's so important that you're uh, visible. All of that is um, who you are as a, a brand, as a personal brand and as the brand that you're, you start in representing. Um, so that is something I really pride myself on and, and take really serious. And I think people value that. And, they, and that's how you build trust as well. Once they see that you're, you're doing it to your best of your ability without making stops. As well as that, in addition to that, I would say having good character and integrity. Um, so your word is your bond and your, and it's once again, your identity, who you are, who you represent um, is your yourself. And oftentimes I found when, when it comes, I would say when it came to photography, my clients would hire me before they would hire my service. Of course, they may need my photography services, but they know that they're going to um, have me there and I'm gonna provide, you know, be very cordial and, and personable and, and show up on time and, and provide a consistent measure of, of work in addition to, so, it, in addition to the service, but having those attributes are, are critical, I would say. And in addition to that, I would say map out your future, but do it in pencil. And what I mean by that is when I went to college, um, I thought about my future in the nonprofit arena, didn't know anything about, as I mentioned, possibly pursuing um, the world of you know, sock design, or even becoming a full-time photographer. Those things just kind of happened because I believed in myself. I bet on myself, even when family and others may not have thought it was the best thing for me. And I think it's out of, some, mostly out of wanting me to be self-sufficient. But with so many resources out there to support yourself, or to pursue, you can certainly make those dreams a reality. Um, and so in pencil, the, some things happen and you don't wanna have to go and make these serious changes if, if possible. So um, if upscale socks or photography didn't work out, then I always had my backup plan of my education which is why many of you all are at SCCC, hopefully pursuing some great careers. And maybe you also are interested in business, but um, my, having my bachelor's and master's degree, if, if something were to happen, I can always fall back on, on that. And so in addition to that, and I don't know if I have time, but I'd like to share a couple more. I'm just gonna list them because as I was asked to share three, there are so many things that came to mind and I just wanna leave you with these things that are really important. So one is make sure you're having fun. Sometimes you have to fake it until you make it. And hopefully you're not offended by that, but you just have to really be out there and, and put your best foot forward and you're gonna make it. Delegate certain things, um, don't try to do it all. Communicate, that's really important. As I mentioned about posting on social media or communicating with your clients, getting right back to them in a timely fashion. Uh, remain humble, but never have humble goals. If it costs you your peace, it's too expensive. So for me, balance is really important. Um, after this seminar, I'm going to the gym, going in the sauna for 10 minutes and showering and finishing out my day. Um, be yourself, uh, be, being yourself is to be authentic. So don't try to be a carbon copy or someone else that you may see out there. You know, of course you can draw inspiration from that, but never try to 
be a carbon copy. And so that those are the tips and ideas that I would share with you all today. And uh, of course, happy to share more in the future on a one on one basis or maybe on the campus of SCCC. That would be fantastic. Thank you so much, Lenny. Those are all great tips. And it is really hard to just think of three things. So that was quite a challenge for our panelists today, I got to say. Um, I wanna make sure I take a second to thank all of our panelists. They all have a few things in common. And one of the things is that they all give back in various ways. And they've mentioned a number of ways that they do, but just their being here today is them giving back. And so they're sharing their expertise with you all. They share you know, that strength of character, integrity. They all have a passion for what they do and for also bringing other people along and helping others. They all utilize resources and networks and services that are out there available and they, they're taking those leaps to do so. So they are in fact showing up to the party like Jeff Taylor says. Um, again, thank you so much. We will be sharing both their, uh, the presentation with the tips and their contact information. And I want to just uh, add a couple more things because I was trying to take notes. One thing that impresses me about all of them is that they each had some kind of hurdle of varying degrees and challenges and types, and they navigate around them, through them, ignore them, but they don't let things get in their way for thinking big. And this is, I have huge respect for them all, thinking big that sometimes we're so focused on what we're doing at the moment, we don't think big enough. And they're all big thinkers, which I absolutely love. But I'm gonna segue into the reason that we started this series was not only to highlight great speakers like we had today, but to feature some of the business support organizations and networks that are out there and available to anyone that wants to start and run a business, those that are already running it, thinking about starting it at all different points. And we are featuring today SCORE. And I'm gonna hand over to uh, Professor Rondinelli to introduce um, Len Gendron from SCORE. So Anthony. Thank you, Professor Sabato. Um, first of all, wow, I, I am just blown away and so inspired with uh, each of our panelists today. So um, I wanna echo uh, Professor Sabato's uh, comments. We can't thank you enough. And um, this has been tremendous. And um, with, with respect to SCORE, um, SCORE is a local organization. It's actually a national organization that I'm very proud to be part of myself. Uh, I am a SCORE certified mentor and SCORE is in the business of helping businesses succeed. And uh, our speaker, next speaker, uh, Len Gendron is a big part of that. So I'd like to uh, give you a little bit of information on Len. Len is a native Vermonter where he began his 45 year manufacturing career, taking his first manufacturing job in a local woolen mill while he was still in high school. His career continued with General Electric Small Aircraft Engine Group, where he was hands on with material controls, production control, and quality assurance. He took four years. He took off four years to volunteer in the US Air Force during the Vietnam War era with assignments in Japan and South Korea as a Chinese linguist. His career continued with Robert Shaw Controls who manufactured temperature and pressure relief valves and ball valves, followed by four assignments with Prestolite Wire, manufacturing ignition wires and battery cables for Ford, Chrysler, and other large auto manufacturers. He held positions as a cost accountant, plant controller, and plant manager. In this company, he received his first plant management position and simultaneous plant management of factories in Port Huron, Michigan, and Kitchener, Ontario. He then moved to Darling Store Fixtures, a major supplier of store fixtures to Walmart and other large chains around the world. They were a Mormon group company. He, he was sent to a sister company in Curtispa, Brazil, manufacturing refrigerated showcases. 
Then with the same company, he was appointed CEO of Long Air Docks China, manufacturing and selling coal mining equipment, conveyor systems, and prefabricated modular coal washing factories. Along the way, he owned three companies of his own, a photography studio, then a computer education and services company, including web design in the fledgling internet industry, and at last a consulting company in China, helping foreign companies get started there. He managed three nonprofit companies, homeless shelter for men, women and families serving three meals per day and distributing non-perishable foods and clothing. He served as director of the Port Huron Museum of Arts and History, an art gallery encouraging local artists and uh, curating the artifacts of the area's vibrant history. And finally, president of the Collins Theater in Paragould, Arkansas, a renovated vaudeville theater. Wow, what a career. Len has a BS degree in business with a concentration in accounting and languages. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce my good friend, Len Gendron, to talk to you about what SCORE is all about. Len? Hey, Anthony, thank you very much for that uh, long introduction there. I uh, appreciate that. As uh, I'm going to echo everybody else on here, I'm impressed with the three individuals that we've had a chance to uh, hear from. Uh, and uh, one of the things that strikes me is it all uh, kind of starts with a dream. That's what uh, SCORE is all about. You have a dream, uh, you come to SCORE, and we try to help you realize that dream by maybe giving you the, uh, the steps or the skills to be able to navigate this new world of entrepreneurism. Uh, the other thing I, I, I took away from that was that everybody has a vision for their future. It may not be specific, but they, we know the direction that you're, that you're headed in. And again, SCORE helps you to realize that vision by giving you the anchor in education and, uh, uh, and uh, access to experience to be able to put your dream together in a, in a real world. SCORE, uh, uh, in uh, uh, our local SCORE here in 2021, uh, our clients started 60 new businesses and 329 new jobs. Uh, considering we were in the middle of the, uh, the pandemic, to have uh, people with the uh, courage to start a business in the middle of all of this stuff, um, uh, it's um, uh, quite amazing. SCORE was founded in 1964. Uh, today we have 10,000 plus volunteers uh, and you have access to every one of those when you uh, are, become a client of SCORE. If we don't have the skill locally, we can tap into each of these individuals uh, to, uh, uh, to help you. Uh, SCORE is our country's largest business mentoring organization. And the big deal here is free. All of your mentoring is totally free, no cost whatsoever. And the motto is for the life of your business. That means from the time you have an idea, a, a dream that you wake up uh, in the morning to the time that you're ready to retire or sell the business, we're there with you. Uh, free a lot of free resources. If you want to go to score.org and check that out, there are workshops, there are templates, there are articles, there's access to all kinds of uh, individuals and uh, so forth. Uh, uh, we offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring at all of your business stages from startup uh, we, uh, our biggest product is business plans. Uh, we can help you with the cash flow forecast and managing your cash flow. Uh, we have folks that can help you with your marketing, pricing, costing, big pitfalls in an entrepreneur situation, exit planning, and much more. We want you all to be as successful as our three great examples here. So get yourself a, 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 a SCORE a mentor. Uh, go to SCORE.org or uh, westernmassachusetts.score.org and uh, click the thing that says find a mentor and you can come to us and get your personal one-on-one -on -one mentor. Good luck to everybody. You got it in you. You can do it. You just need some extra push, if you will, or maybe some education. Come to us and, uh, and we'll help you. 
That's my spiel. Thank you, Lynn. One of the reasons that I wanted your long bio read is that I wanted people to understand the caliber of the score counselors that are available. And, and the score counselors bring a huge array of skill levels and experiences that apply to just about anything, as you said. So thank you so much for that. Uh, next slide, please. I'm gonna just show this slide. We are gonna talk about it, but we're running short of time. We want at least a few minutes for some questions at the end. But just know that at STCC, we offer a number of different options for people that want to pursue certificates or um, two-year degrees in business, both online, on campus, and then we have some specialized degree in office administration. So you can go on our website and learn more about those. But I'd like to go to the next slide so that we can open it up to some Q&A for anyone in the audience if you want to type in the chat or put your hand up. Um, and then please ask away. I know that we've all been incredibly impressed with what we've heard. So does anyone have a burning question that they'd like to get to right off the bat? I'm gonna look at the chat. I'm gonna look at the Q and A. Um, so I'm gonna start with a question that I have actually is, how do you deal with the fear? You all went ahead and took big steps, overcame obstacles, but I just find that for me and my side hustle and for other people that I've worked with in entrepreneurship, fear can get in the way. And, and how do you manage that? Anyone can answer this. I think um, for me, oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. Uh, so for me, it's I've, whenever I find that I'm at a point where I'm feeling uncomfortable, or afraid to do something, I know that I'm on a step of growth. And it's, I, I personally doing this, I was nervous walking into the room to do this. And whenever Professor Spottle put me in front of uh, a room full of other my, of my peers to speak about my businesses, um, I was scared to death to do it, but I just knew that it's it's a step in the, for growth in, in the right direction. And don't hesitate, just go for it and then just see how it results after, learn lessons that you can improve upon. And that's that's always been my approach. Thanks, Mark. Shayla? I think for me, it goes back to one of the three points is that, that there's somebody always watching. Um, I always make sure that my yes will be my yes and I make my way to my yes. And sometimes it's just, just there's some dramatics to it. And then sometimes I bring dramatic into it. Like yesterday we had these cookies that didn't come out right. They just didn't come out the way I wanted it to. But because people were watching, I had no choice but to regroup, regather, regather um, and then relaunch. And it's just making sure to not let fear have the front seat because it's not going to take you where you want it to go. Thanks, Sheila. Len, Lenny, I'm not sure if you want to add anything. Yeah, I would say for me, um, it goes back to my faith. So I, I do my prayers and, you know, the Bible says God hasn't given me the spirit of fear. So I just operate thinking and knowing that and empowering myself to believe that as much as possible. And after all these years, I would say my level of, I would say fear and anxiety has certainly waned at times. Of course, we get anxious and, you know, may not want to pursue things, but believing in yourself and being, um, Real, making really calculated decisions help with um, moments like that. Thanks, Lenny. And we do have a question from Franklin, uh, thanking you for being here. And he's wondering, how do you stay calm when you become overly stressed? So it relates kind of to the fear question. Mark, you want to take that one? How do you get calm? Um, geez, I don't, I, I, my industry, it's very stressful. Um, there's often a lot of balls in the air. And when I get overwhelmed, thinking what, you know, what to do next or what problems to solve, or, you know, what customer deserves, you know, demands my most attention. Um, you know, I try to just pick the one thing, if all things are to stay the same, what's the one thing that's gonna have the biggest impact on my business or in my people in the building or progressing my company. And I try to focus on accomplishing that one thing at a time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as business owner, you're often, and I'm sure Lenny and Chile can attest, you're often wearing a lot of hats. 
Um, but sometimes you can't wear them all at once. So you have to figure out which hat is the most important to wear and uh, tackle that task and then mm -hmm. see what, what's the next one you need to pick up. Yes, thanks. Yeah. Money, I'm guessing you go to the gym, do the sauna, like you said. <laughs> yeah, you got it. That, that was going to be my response. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's that's my really my, my way to unwind and my phone's in my locker for that two hour span of time. And I'm unplugged from, you know, what's happening. And it keeps me level headed and, um, you know, not stress as I could be. I want to be inspired by you to get myself to the gym more often. I'm just saying. <laughs> I got Shayla. you. Let's, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> yep. Shayla. <laughs> Um, like, like, you know, like Lenny, I'm also a Christian and I, the most important part of my day is, um, I drop my girls off and then I sit and I listen and I, and I listen to, to worship music and I pray and I just center myself. Um, mm -hmm. and it's important to be able to get that time to just meditate and realign myself back to where it is I belong and where I need to be. And, and I just pull that out of my back pocket as I need to throughout the day. So it's not eating a cookie. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's something else absolutely awesome um those are really good tips and i think taking a moment and actually breathing are really important things to do when you're stressed and you each have a strategy that involves that in in some way um so i have one last question because i don't think i see any others right here but it's what i struggle with in my business and i you know referenced it how do you begin to think big. I wanna encourage our students to not think small. I think we think way too small. So how do you get yourself to start thinking big? Um, I don't know, for me, I, I guess, you know, I work on my business plans and uh, I set my goals and then, I just try to make it even bigger. Like one of the big things that Winsply does is your BHAG, which is your big, hairy, audacious goal. Mm -hmm. And that is to, you know, something that may not even seem achievable, um, but you put it down on paper and you make it aware to everybody. And um, it's, it never seems like it's too big, I guess. Kind of a good question then. I just keep, keep trying to get, for the higher rung and I, don't know. I would say for me I see my I can see a glimpse of the future um oftentimes when I'm planning and that's what helps me to dream big and with taking risks and oftentimes if someone shares an idea with me or if I might have seen something on social media, I'll say, you know, I can do that as well. And I think that I kind of touched on that when it came to upscale socks. I um, didn't want to just sit on the idea, but pursue it and figure it all out. And I think that's what has helped me with just navigating through the, the world of business and mm -hmm. kind of just being focused on what, what I'm called to do. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Shayla, you're a huge thinker. Like it's, you all have that entrepreneurial quality of looking at your next big adventure. Like you're in your moment, one foot in your moment and one foot in your grand thinking, which is awesome. Go ahead, Shayla. I think for me is, um, you know, I, I will always remember that woman that was sitting in that homeless shelter. And the, the, the main purpose for Hot Oven Cookies has always been to launch and to offer uh, attainable and sustainable self-employment for um, single moms, um, women of color, men of color, um, older, you know, uh, uh, people, retirees, anybody, just the average person that's always been told that they weren't enough. That's always been our goal. So the only, the only way we're ever going to achieve that is to keep thinking big and mm -hmm. to keep pushing forward and to let no idea be audacious enough um, and to continue to kind of believe in ourselves. And, you know, we were just talking about this morning, like we are about three years out from launching our first franchise and it does not allow me to go backwards. 
or to demonize, like to think small for any any particular reason. So thinking big around here is not just the cookies we do that's big. It's the <laughs> planning. Um, and we can't wait. And, and that's that's what we're hoping for. Thank you so much. There were a couple of extra um, questions here in the chat, but I think we're that's a great note to end on and we'll include in the follow-up the questions that weren't answered. Um, and uh, Anthony, you wanted to do a quick wrap up comment? Yeah, and I, I just wanna say, I'm listening to each of you talk about, you know, what motivates you and how to overcome adversity. And um, I, I, I'm an entrepreneur too. I started a small practice back in 2015. Um, and I know what that feeling is like. And it's amazing, you know, it's a side practice, but it's something that it motivates you. And, you know, I think little successes have a way of making you think bigger. And I'm sure that you guys have all had those instances where you have, you know, you have failures, but you have little successes along the way. And the little successes are what drive you and motivate you to, to want to do more, to, to think, you know, outside the box. And that really is what makes for a, a great entrepreneur, a great business person. And I'll also add one thing, knowledge is power. You know, STCC offers a variety of business programs for, um, you know, very, very inexpensive cost. And I would encourage anybody that wants to, that's watching the video here with us today, to explore the business programs here at STCC. Uh, I can only speak for Diane and myself. You know, Diane is a tremendous colleague and I see her passion for teaching business. Um, I've seen it in, in all the time that we've been together. And I think she would say the same thing about me. We're, we're impassioned to help educate people and help them to become successful. And each of you is proof that STCC and what we're trying to do here um, with our relationship with SCORE works. And you know, I just, I just wanna say wholeheartedly how thankful I am to be a part of this college and to be associated with, with SCORE and with all of you. And I, I wish you much success in the future. Thank you so much for being here today. All right, thank you all. I think we can show the contact information. You will receive a copy uh, in an email with a copy of the pre presentation link, contact information, and check out all the businesses that were featured today. Uh, if you need some supplies, go see Mark. If you're hungry and need delicious cookies, go see Shayla and Lenny could take pictures of you wearing his amazing socks. You'll be good to go. Thank you all, have a great day. <laughs>